Good morning all. It's time to open some post because projects are being held up due to unopened envelopes. So let's get this one open. Ah, some nicely wrapped stuff. Oh yeah, there's some pretty good stuff in here. This capacitor kit is really quite intriguing. We'll come back to that. Here are 100 uh, green rectangular LEDs. Now, are they going to be the same super giga bright as these 100 green rectangular LEDs? Let's find out. What else do we have? Uh, some straw hat LEDs. I don't quite know why I bought those. Oh, yes, I do know why I bought those. And it's incredibly silly. And we have some chippies. What are they? TLO74 quad. JFET input op amps. Right, I'm going to start with the green rectangular LEDs. Now, these green rectangular LEDs are super high brightness. What are these going to be? Is there a way I can tell whether they're different? How about putting one of each onto a battery at the same time? Let's try that. Now, they're going to share the resistor because the resistor is inside the battery. We're relying on internal resistance. So what's going to happen? Oh, that's interesting. Did you see the way this one pulled the brightness of this one right down? Right down. And this one's not very bright at all. I think I've got my dim green rectangular LEDs, which I wanted. Thumbs up. Oh, and while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up. Yes, these are definitely the dim LEDs. Look at the brightness of this one when I put the high brightness one on. It doesn't change at all, but it's pulling the brightness of the high brightness one, which is going to have a higher forward voltage way, way down. Let's put the bright, high brightness one on. Check out the mega brightness and then watch it dim when I attach this one across it because this one has a lower forward voltage. So my 10 LED bar graph uh, display volume units meter, which is probably not volume units because this is the 3915, but it's a logarithmic display audio uh, level meter where the high brightness green LEDs were so bright they overwhelmed the yellow and red. I think that can now be fixed probably by building another one of these because these LEDs are going to be extraordinarily difficult to get off here. Um, this can be fixed by putting in the lower brightness LEDs. Let's go to eBay. So this was a hundred pieces of two by five by seven millimeter rectangular green LED. Now how do you know whether you're getting the older low brightness type gallium arsenide I think it is or the newer high brightness type? Well you really don't. It's pot luck and it looks like I've got lucky because I actually want the low brightness type. $2.72 free shipping, Survey 2014. Now look, here's a chap from Lithuania who's selling very small quantities of uh, green rectangular LEDs. But look at the brightness difference. This one is 780 to 1300 millicandelas. And then he's selling these ones here, which are just 9 to 20 millicandelas. So you can see from this that these are super high brightness and these are really quite dim. But not many sellers give you the light output or indeed the wavelength of light. So unless you're willing to spend these large amounts of money, it really is a bit of a lucky dip. So I'm well pleased with these. That's going to totally fix uh, the brightness problem I was having on this thing because these is really dim. Now the other LEDs I bought from Servi are these white straw hat ones. I think the idea was to make little lamp posts, but I don't think I'm going to bother doing that. But yeah, they're quite pretty. You get a um, that's interesting. The camera showing this as a sort of five millimeter white spread. I wonder if I get really close, and no, that doesn't help. But I'm seeing this as a much smaller point of light in the centre of this uh, plastic thing. Yeah, 
So those are the straw hat white LEDs. So they are 100 pieces, five millimeter white straw hat, super bright LED. Not a lot to say about these really. $1.11 for 100. Free shipping. That's also Survey 2014. Now this capacitor kit is quite interesting. I wanted for my input amplifier board a 68 picofarad capacitor. So I looked for some uh, little low value capacitors and this kit came up, but it's not all low value capacitors. In fact, it's a bit of an odd thing. So we got um, 10 puff, 20 puff, 30 puff, 47, 56, 68, which is the one I wanted, and 100 puff. The 30 actually, interestingly, is marked uh, 30. No, that's not interesting. The 20 is marked 200 because there isn't a 200 puff in here. So yeah, the numberings are a bit weird, but then they really jump up. You've got 1N, which is the 102. You've got 10N, which is the 103. Gosh, they're very tiny. And 100N, which is the 104. So you've got 100N, 10N, 1N, and then a whole range of really low values. It's just a very weird kit, but very useful. Yeah, look, these are marked 10. These are marked 200 but I think they're 20 puff. I think these would have to be checked. And these are marked 30. So the markings are rather odd. So it's a 300 pieces, uh, 10 values, 50 volt, 10 puff to 100 NF. But that's a bit misleading because, well, I'll show you the uh, values. Multi-layer ceramic capacitor assortment kit, $4.58, free shipping. Survey 2014. Let's look at the data. And here it is. Very convenient and practical. Very popular among the electronic lovers. Uh, 10 puff to 100 nanofarads. But as I say, it's strange values. 10 puff, 20 puff, 30 puff, 47 puff, 56 puff, 68 puff, 100 puff, 1 nanofarad, 100, uh, 10 nanofarads and 100 nanofarads. You might find that it's a very handy kit. I have. And finally in this package from Survey, uh, 20 pieces evidently of the TLO74, which is a quad op amp uh, JFET input. Not much more to say about it than that. This is for the Vocoder project. Let's get straight on to eBay. And so very straightforwardly, this is 20 pieces of the TLO74 op amp quad JFET dip 14, $2.08, free shipping survey. And next up is this one. Uh, oh yeah, I know what this is. In fact, I'm not even gonna open this because I'll get a thousand comments and I don't want to answer a thousand comments about this particular item. Moving on. So let's instead do this package, which is from Lucky Warm. It's another multiple items package. What have we got? Oh yes, the syringe um, adapter kit. We've seen that before. I'm not going to bother with that, but I am going to bother with um, solder. So we've got one type of solder there. I think, oh, solder paste. Oh, is that what's in here? Okay. So now recently I bought this Jin Hu solder and I didn't get on with it terribly well. It, it sort of behaved a little bit like um, lead free solder. It's not, or at least it says it's not, it's 6337. I've given it a score of five out of 10. Not terribly happy with that, but I did want to persevere with this because apparently it's becoming increasingly difficult to buy uh, tin lead solder. So I bought this stuff and it's Koo, no, Koo Koo, Koo Koo solder, uh, diameter 0.15 inches. Uh, what does that say? 63SN, 37PB, flux 1.2%, which doesn't sound like a lot of flux because this one says 2.0%, made in China. So um, the finest quality solder. So we'll give that one a go. And on eBay, this is solid solder, 0.3 millimeters, 0.3 millimeters. Is it really that fine? Let's have another look at it. Um, diameter flux core 63, tin 37 lead, 
long wire reel. I'm not sure how much is on there, probably 50 grams, which of course includes the plastic reel. Uh, well, that's only $1.38. Free shipping, lucky warm. Oh yeah, that really is micro fine stuff. I don't think I realized that when I bought it. Uh, this one is 0.8 millimeters and that one is 0.3. You can see that that is much finer. Right, onto the solder paste. Now this is interesting because we've got a sort of anti-counterfeiting hologram on there. It's branded mechanic solder paste. And on the top it says, made by Hong Kong well solo counterfeiters will be sued <laughs> so this looks like the genuine article and yes i'm still using solder paste and i'm kind of mixing it in little tiny pots now to get the consistency right more about that later let's take a look at this on ebay it is mechanic repairing solder soldering paste xg50 brackets xg500 42 grams you get uh tin 63 percent lead 37 percent 25 to 45 is the uh, size of the solder balls in microns three dollars 82 because of course this is the genuine item free shipping from lucky warm actually i'm going to show this um syringe adapter because there's something a bit odd about it it's um a totally different diameter to the other one I've got so when you buy these things be careful about syringe diameter hmm yeah so I suppose the only thing that identifies this as a bigger one is this 30 cc to 50 cc plastic transparent air tubing glue dispenser syringe adapter so I guess the bigger one fits the 30 cc to 50 cc syringes and of course the solder paste comes in those 10 cc syringes um, or at least you get 10 cc's of solder paste maybe the syringes are 20 cc I don't know but this one's clearly a different size I don't know might come in handy $1.56 free shipping lucky warm so make sure you're buying the right size yeah you see this one is a one meter length air tubing and it specifically says 10cc glue dispenser syringe adapter. And they seem to use the same photograph because the bigger one had a red O-ring. But they had a photograph of the uh, black O-ring. So really it's in the title. It's in the description. Watch out. I'm going to do one more because I think this one is quite interesting. It's quite heavy. Well, let's open this. And it is big solid copper terminals. Yes, it's a 60 piece kit of whopping great copper terminals. I think they're copper. Should we try and scratch one? They're plated copper by the look of it. Let's try and get this thing open. So these are interesting. Um, we've got SC16-8. These are, what are they? Uh, SC10-8. These say 6-8. So I'm thinking the 8, the second number, is the diameter of the hole. These are big chunky things and are SC25-8. So is that first number the wire gauge or something? These are actually quite heavy. And yet these ones feel very light and a bit noddy. But um, the whole diameter seems to be right. And then these ones are dash six. So I think these are all the same set of four, but in with a six millimeter hole. It's quite a heavy kit. In some ways it seems quite nice. These ones are a little bit lightweight, but uh, some of these are really heavy. Now what's critically important to me is that this one with the 8 mil hole fits over this stud. So let's give it a try. Oh yes, it does. That's fantastic. That means I can connect PWM5s 
to these Trojan batteries, which are going to form my new power wall. And a huge thanks to Jim for bringing these round, and they are monstrously heavy. In fact, I can't even lift them single-handed. So given the diameter of the wire that is going to be coming from my charge controller, despite saying that these ones are a bit wimpy, it's probably going to be this one that I'll use because it's got the smallest diameter wire entry, but with that eight millimeter hole. Let's take a look at this kit on eBay. It is a 60 pieces electrical wire copper lug battery cable ring connector terminal set. Um, $11.11. .11. It's quite a heavy duty thing. Free shipping and that came from Direct Motor. And just in case you're interested, here are the sizes. 6-6, And so these are today's post bag items. Um, one or two of which I'm really happy about. These lugs, they fit, and the dim green LEDs. Very pleased. Also interested to see whether this solder's any good. Uh, a big thanks to my sponsor, JLC PCB, and of course there will be lots more PCB-related videos uh, coming up. Big thanks also to Patreon supporters. If you would like to be a Patreon supporter, you can click this link here. There's another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you're not subscribed to this channel and would like to be, you can click this link here. Cheerio!